Tonight, we're going to go over job applications. And so under class resources, you should be th you should see three applications. Uh, they, they are labeled number one, number two, and number three. All right, and so we're going to work with number one and number two in class. All right, and number two, um, I'm pretty sure, is the application that asks you to write a paragraph. And so I know English grammar is pretty difficult for a lot of my students. Um, and so we're going to work specifically on that paragraph because a lot of times on applications, we'll see, um, tell us why you would like to work for this company and what you can bring. All right. Um, and so we're going to go through these applications and just make sure you understand um, what they're asking for. So instead of putting your last name where they want your first name and things like that. So avoiding those simple errors because sometimes you're filling these out in pen and in person um, and other times you're doing them on the internet. And the thing is, if you make a mistake on your application, a lot of times people throw your job applications right out, especially in the U.S. Um, and so we're going to go over what you need to do when you're applying for a job in the U.S., um, especially if you're going into a certain place. Um, and I just have a few tidbits, a few tips uh, for you. Those take like 20 seconds. Um, so things you need to do when applying for a job. And then we'll take a look at things you need for your applications. And we're going to practice filling them out. Because um, even I uh, read the applications too quickly and I make mistakes. Um, and then I have to cross them out, all right, or white out or sneak and take another application and hope they don't notice that I'm on my second. I've done that before, all right? Um, so hopefully you guys will join class and we'll take a look at how to fill these out. All right. I just can't find the second one, which is really bad. Ah, here we go. All right. And third. And so um, you'll see on my class description that I assign homework. And that's honestly if we don't get um, to the third application. Uh, but that's also if you want to do it. So I have a Facebook. And we'll see if I don't think Burbling Chat is working. But it's www.facebook.com slash Laura Unburbling. And if you follow me on Burbling, you can find my link and you can post your homework there or send it to me in a message, all right? Because I know there'll be some personal information on it, like your home address and things like that. All right, so welcome to class, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, so just to the viewers out there, are you sure you don't want to join class? <laughs> um, <laughs> Because I know this is one of the reasons most people are on Verbling is because they want a job um, in an English-speaking company or country, um, so business English. Um, and you're not going to be able to use your English if you don't get the job, so you should join class. All right. Um, so we're just going to work with, I don't know, were you able to access my class resources? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, so we're going to work with the one labeled first application. All right. And so I'm going to go to screen share. Okay. And so this is what it should look like. And this is very, very generic. I've had probably 10 or 15 job applications that look like this. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're applying for something silly like grocery store, or a waitress, um, you'll get something like this. Um, even for a large company, you may get a simple application like this, but then have a grueling exam process after. Um, and I've taken an exam that's taken two or three hours to get through before. So <laughs> I wish you guys luck. All right, so when we look at this application, um, the first thing we want to notice is company or employer name. All right, so what company are you applying for? All right. 
Um, and usually they don't ask you that, but you know, but they will always ask you for this. Um, and so, can anyone tell me what that is? I don't want to the position applying for. Can you describe that at all? Yeah, the title of the job or something like that. Yeah. Um, so for the the purpose of this class, uh, we're going to work in a restaurant and we're want to become servers just to keep it simple so everyone's applying for this job you know a restaurant worker and I know that's not the most glorious position ever but pretty um, simple just to write so everyone knows what to write for here all right so the title of your job um, all right and so we do this different in the United States um, what do they want first for your name. When you write your name, are you writing your full name in the correct order? No, the last name first, family name first. Yeah, so we do our family name and you'll see it's labeled last. Then you'll see first name. So for example, my last name is Gomont. All right, my first name is Laura and I'm only going to give you my initial. All right, so E. Otherwise, you'll be able to find way too much information about me. All right, um, and so your middle name. All right. Um, okay, and so when they ask for your telephone number, which number do they want? Your fixed line. Hmm? Your fixed line. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they want your fixed line. Um, and so I don't have a fixed line. So do you know what you should do when you have um, when you don't have an answer for the question on the application? Maybe you have to put your mobile phone. No, I think you should write okay. like a, a dash or something. So, mm -hmm. so, so you can do a dash. Um, all right. Well. You're going to see all the spots, but you can also write um, NA. And does anyone know what that means? Yes. N slash A. Not so applicable. Can, yeah, exactly. Okay. So you can write that as well. It depends on what you want to do. Um, I sometimes write not applicable for phone numbers uh, for the telephone because I don't have a fixed number. Um, email, same in every language usually. Um, alternate phone and you'll see a few um, labels for this so what labels will you see for alt alternative phone number your mobile phone cell phone mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, so we have a few um, so work British uh, so work phone number maybe um, yeah so alternative phone uh, you'll see cell phone number almost all the time within the United States um, and from time to time you'll see mobile phone so just remember that cell phone is mobile all right so cell phone cell phone is, is more common to say than mobile, mobile. Um, yeah in American English okay. yeah British is uh, mobile and American is cell phone okay. all right yeah and so they may ask you for your work phone number as well um, and then, because we're going to pretend you are living in the U.S., does anyone know how to write a phone number in the U.S.? No, I have no idea. I think the country code is one. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, usually when you're dialing outside of the country, it's plus uh, one but you're just going to write one and you actually need to dial it that nowadays. Uh, what else do you need? Uh, we need something to clarify area the code. state. Area mm -hmm. code. Yeah, so, all right, so area code. And then how many uh, uh, numbers do we have in our, self, or in our telephone number in the United States? After, after the area code or? Including the area code. Mm -hmm. Including. Uh, after, I think it, I've seen like nine number, nine digits or something like that. And they group it like three. 
I think it should be seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have like one, this. and then I'm doing. Okay. Very close. Yeah. Um, okay. It my is opinion seven. Is it ten? Seven. seven. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm um, so I'm just going to make up a number: two, three, four, five. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is how you should write your phone numbers. We need the one, um, and even when you call um, within the United States, you need to use the number one. Um, and then you always have to use the area code of the state. It's always in parentheses. You leave a space. You do the first three numbers. Then you do a dash, and you do the last four numbers. Okay. Um, so that's how so we even, write phone numbers within the U.S. So even within mm -hmm. the United States, you have to dial one first. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, that changed a few years ago. Um, so when I started college, I could just dial uh, three o two, and it would be fine. Um, and so three o two is the area code for Delaware. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and so if you have a Delaware phone number, if you're calling from your house in Delaware or your Delaware cell phone, you can dial 302. But if you are like me, um, my number, well, it's French now, but um, in the past it was from Massachusetts and Connecticut. If I call anyone, um, say my Massachusetts number, if I'm calling anyone who lives in Delaware and I don't use the one, it won't work. It'll call someone in Massachusetts. Um, so it'll it'll use the last seven numbers and it will ignore the state code altogether. And how do you say those numbers? Do you say like 234 or 234? Yep. Uh, so we say my number is 1302-234-4566. Uh, and okay. people, yeah, usually pause like 234-4567. So they pause between the the last two numbers in between those four. All right. um, so that's pretty important because a lot of times we can't read uh, phone numbers, um, especially foreign numbers. I have a problem with that here in France. Uh, they're much longer. <laughs> All right. um, and so what is the address? The street address and the zip Place where you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So a lot of times in the U.S., um, you're just going to see an address line, and so what you have to do is you have to do your street number. Um, I should probably not do my real address. <laughs> so 64. Okay. So you live at 64 Penny Lane, and you live in Wilmington, Delaware. All right. Um, and so, one nine seven eight. Okay, we'll just make something up. All right. So you need the the street number, um, and then uh, the name of the street. You need your town. All right. So my town would be Wilmington, Delaware, or my town's Wilmington, separated by a comma, Delaware, and then afterwards you need the zip code. All right. So that's a complete address within the U.S. Um, and if you live in an apartment, it would be APT, and then you can put your apartment like E4 or something. Um, and that would go after 64 Penny Lane, apartment E4 would be an example of that. So it's an apartment number. Mm -hmm. And that goes after your street address. So the first thing you start with is number, street address. Then you can add an apartment number or a condo number. Um, okay, then you need your town, your state, and your zip code. Right. Um, and those are, don't forget the state. <laughs> That's the most important thing because uh, a lot of our towns are in each state. Uh, so we have like a Wilmington, North Carolina. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, and so. This question is on like every application. Are you able to perform the essential functions of the position with or without accommodations? So what is that asking us? How can we simplify that? 
Does anyone know? Maybe if you live near the vacancy that they are offered, or I don't know, if you need accommodation in a hotel or, or something. Okay, so that's one uh, word of uh, one meaning of accommodation is that you need um, a place to live. Okay. Yeah, yeah. but that place sorry, it's impossible to answer the question with or without the accommodations. I mean, if so they ask, are you, are you are you able to perform the essential functions of the position with or without accommodations? Yeah, yeah it's poorly written. It's two questions. Like. Yeah. So what they're asking for, they want a yes. They're um, saying the question is asking, do you have uh, special needs, and do you need help? So, um, yeah, it's a poorly worded question, but you'll see this almost all the time. And so, um, what you say is like, yes, <laughs> um, because you can perform the essential functions without accommodation, so without help. Okay. Um, and also, um, in Every state, you have to be 16 or older to work. Um, in a few states in the South, it's 15. And for a lot of positions, it's 18 and 20. Um, so depending on the job you're applying for. So for a server, you have to be 18 years old. So are you older than 18? And you should know how old you have to be for the job you're applying for. Um, so. Uh, just use Google Chat, and it's like, are you older than 18 years old? And it's like, yes, I am, if you check that one. All right. Um, are you legally eligible for employment in the U.S.? Uh, what does this ask for? Um, basically, they ask you for your nationality. Do you have for, work visa? Yeah, if you have a visa. So, yeah, there's trying to tell, you're right, one, if you're, you're foreign, are you foreign, but do you have the right to work with the, in the U.S., okay? Um, so if you have working papers or a visa or you're here on a program slash internship or you're a student, mm -hmm. do you have the right? Um, work so, permit. yes. All right. Um, so, I am seeking a permanent position. Does anyone know what a permanent position is? It's a, fi a fixed contract. Long term. Mm -hmm. um, long term vacancy. Yeah, so long term. Something, um, you know, that's usually longer than a year or two. So, longer than a year or two. All right, and so um, because in the U.S. you can find um, positions that are only, you know, a few weeks long or a few months, um, and they're contractual, um, which means that you're signing a contract for three months. All right. Um, what about working overtime? Flexible house. Kind of. Kind of. What does it mean when we ask you... Will you over time this week? So will uh, you work? This question is about are you able to work uh, more time than it, it necessary? For example, yeah. in many countries, 40 hours per week. Mm -hmm. So this question is asking you are you able to work more than 40 hours per day or per week or 8 hours per day? Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, what is the benefit usually of? working overtime. Does anyone know what benefit you get in the U.S.? Uh, in the U.S. I think it's coefficient 1.5. It means mm -hmm. your salary will be increased in 50% of your salary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I gave the example of that for this uh, application we're applying to be a server. So so for not be paid time and a half, um, all right. <laughs> but usually for overtime, uh, minimum the minimum amount of hours you have to work to be considered full time is thirty seven. 
five. Um, and for some companies, um, they push it up to 40. Um, so once you work over 40 hours, uh, so for my mom, for example, she works at the hospital. Full time is considered 37.5, but she does not get paid time until she has clocked 41 hours. So once she hits, you know, 40 hours, 59 minutes, um, she starts overtime. So she has to make it to the full 40 uh, to gain time and a half. All right. All right. And so this is <laughs> um, clearly for a certain state. <laughs> Provide a valid Alaska driver's license. Um, so uh, does anyone not know what a driver's license is? Yep. Okay, great. All right, so a lot of times they want you to have a driver's license within the state you're working um, because it's easier to file uh, taxes. Um, okay. So um, you also want to prove that, you know, you're living close to where your job is, and that's why they're asking for your license because it will have your permanent address on it. All right. Um, and so that's just uh, one of the things jobs kind of use as a trick to see how far away you are. So uh, it's always better to take the candidate, you know, that's either willing to move closer or that lives closer. So if you live two hours away from your job and they take a look at your license and they realize that, they may ask you um, if you're willing to relocate. Um, so can anyone tell us what that means are you willing to relocate? Yeah, are you willing to move? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so are you willing to move? Um, and so if you are applying to jobs, um, you know, if you're applying for jobs for ExxonMobil or Shell Company or um, Apple, <laughs> I don't know, Google, all right, Facebook, um, they're going to ask you if you're willing to relocate because a lot of times you will be moving uh, constantly or like for Facebook for example I have a friend that works there now you know he had to move to San Francisco he's from Connecticut all right so he moved across the country for a job okay um, and so uh, when we're looking at our driver's license and they say issuing state what do they want to know here Yeah, yeah what what state your driver's license are issued in? Mm -hmm. um, and so, if you're applying for a job in Alaska, it better be an Alaskan driver's license because um, Alaska is not really close to any states. It's closer to parts of Canada than it is, you know, to Washington. So in Oregon, but that, don't they right? have the same <laughs> so, driving rules? Uh, they do, but uh, if you're applying to work in Alaska and you don't live in Alaska, you're going to probably have to take a plane every day to work. Um, so they're just uh, making sure you live within this area. All right. And also making sure what they'll do is they'll run a background check on you using your uh, license number. So they're making sure your uh, license is valid and that you say who you are, that you are who you say you are. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Type. So what we're going to take a look at is work the following shifts and check all that apply. Okay, so any should be clear, day should be clear. Um, does anyone know when the night shift starts in the U.S.? What time night shifts start? Um, so day shift is um, usually 9 to 5. Night shift is uh, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Okay. All right. So night shift is 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Right? So be careful if they say, oh, you have the night shift. Uh, you may think that's great at first, like, oh, okay, I'm working in the evening. N no, you'll, 
be a vampire. So you'll be uh, sleeping during the day. Uh, what so about... What is the difference between night shift and graveyard shift? That's the same. Same? There's no difference? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And they have both options here. All right. Uh, um, but this is a really general application. Um, so a lot of times night shifts, they'll have clarification. Um, so it could be 10 p.m. you know to uh, 2 a.m. and you're part time, okay? Or graveyard, so they may specify. It may be an option, you know. They may give you times. Um, it's just that this application isn't very specific, so they haven't done that for us. What is a swinging shift? Daytime and nighttime. Sorry, it depends can on, you... on the day. Yeah, it depends on the yeah. week. Maybe you have one week of daytime and the next one of nighttime. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so you're, it's kind of similar to rotating. Um, the idea oh, that okay. your, sh your shifts are changing from week to week or uh, day to day. So say on Mondays you work 9 to 5. On Tuesdays, you work, you know, 10 to 6. Uh, so swing and rotating are pretty similar, but they should give you options for that. Um, and what you'll see more often is a chart. Um, so you'll usually see a chart, and they'll have you check um, what days you want to work. And then um, split, um, that just means that you're not working the normal Monday through Friday. So split is working, you know, Tuesday through Saturday, or you work Monday, Tuesday, you don't work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you don't work Sunday, something like that. Okay. You have to study every time you apply for a job, <laughs> all kind of. Yeah, and so um, some of these change uh, from application to application. So I do have three applications for us. Um, and the first part of each application is the same or very similar. Yeah. All right. And so this is the most important part, the employment history. And this is the part where do not lie because you will not get hired. <laughs> okay? okay? So make sure um, that you have, I don't know, written down somewhere. Or I use Google a lot on my iPhone to look up my... Um, my employer's address because I didn't know it for the longest time. All right. Um, so you want to put their company name and their address and what you were making. And so they say pay, so dollars per. What is it implied when they put the per? Dollars per month? Uh, hour. Hour, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, most of the time we get paid. Um, we get paid per hour, um, but sometimes we're getting paid per year, and that's a salary. Um, so um, a salary is a contract. So if, if you work 40 hours one week, um, and you work 50 hours the next week, and you work 20 hours the next week, you're still going to make your $25,000, you know, whatever they told you in the beginning. So the hours don't matter. Okay. Um, so for this, um, what you want to make sure is that if you had a salary, so you made a certain amount per year, and it didn't matter the amount of hours you worked, you want to put per year. But most of the time, people are comparing the hourly rate. So you want to make sure that you clarify that it is per hour. All right. Um, because even, um, they may tell you this. Um, I think... Well, I have to do the math quickly. Um, so, for example, um, my mom, she works at the hospital, you know, all right, and so they told her, you know, your, uh, your salary should be 32000 a year. I think that's what. I did the math one time, and so this is what I came up she made, all right? So, your salary is 32000 a year, but I know she makes $16 an hour, all right? So, <laughs> um, they tell you what you're going to make at the end of the year, what you should expect, but then they tell you you're making 
uh, $16 an hour. So um, in the U.S., you're going to have to get used to the fact that your first year of work, you are going to have one week of vacation. Uh, so if you take a day off and you're getting paid by the hour, um, you're not going to make your full 32000 They're going to deduct eight hours of work from that total and not pay you that week. Okay? Um, so that's why they give you a salary amount for the end of the year, but that's why you make $16 an hour. So you can make, you know, your 32000 in the year, but you might not because you will take time off. Okay? Is that for, <laughs> so, for hospital work or what, yeah. what kind of work is it? Really? As a nurse? Um, make... Yes. Yeah, no, no, no. Nurses make much better money in the U.S. Um, she's a secretary, so uh, she schedules surgeries. Okay. Um, so, actually, if I do the math, 16.5 times 16 times 30 times 62. She actually makes 24900 a year. All right, so I just picked a random number, but um, to give you guys an example, um, so what they're doing, just to clarify, you know, you make your salary amount, you can make thirty-two thousand, but because our vacation time is so shitty in the U.S., you're gonna get one week your first two years, okay, <laughs> um, and three after your first two years, and then four after three or four years. It depends on the company. And for example, my stepdad works, he's, um, you know, he's a uh, vice president of an insurance company. He's been there 20 years. He just got his fifth week of vacation, okay? So it's 20 years, five weeks, something to look forward to, okay? <laughs> so, um, yeah, in the U.S., you have to get used to your salary being reduced, which is definitely different. <laughs> I know that. First application, all right. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, um, the one thing um, you should know uh, f when they say reason for leaving, um, if you've ever been fired, um, you're going to have to put, um, I wouldn't put fired, but I would say something like uh, let go. I okay. resign. Um, hmm? I can't say yes. I resign. Um, that would, um, that's different than being fired. So fired is your boss tells you something like, you're an awful employee. I know, I know. It's better than writing fired because it's resign is better. Um, actually, I know um, yeah, I w you'll get in trouble for that. So if you do quit your job, you can say, I resigned, all right? Um, but do not give the actual reason for leaving. Don't say, I quit because my boss was a fucking bitch. Like, <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> or don't put, I was fired because I stole office supplies. What you just want to do um, for reason for leaving, you can say, uh, not applicable. <laughs> um, or you can do a dash. You can say let go. Um, other great ones or are um, looking for better opp opportunities. Okay. Yeah, looking for better opportunities. I don't know if that's going through. My chat seems delayed. Um, and, but I mean, there are many um, another many one. Reasons. A lot of times you're still employed at your recent um, job. Yeah. So you can say still employed. Or you can just write not ap applicable. All right. So just be careful about that because um, in the U.S. they do call your last job. So <laughs> don't lie, especially for this first one. So if you're, you have to list them in chronological order. They most likely are going to call your last job, and just be careful about that. <laughs> All right. Um, because a lot of times um, your bosses cannot reveal the reason in the U.S. why you were fired. It's against the law, depending on the state. All right. So if you're fired, what they have to say is it wasn't working out. Okay. Um, which is very vague. So it may help you if you were a terrible employee. <laughs> but hopefully none of you are. 
All right. So <laughs> Did you? Okay. Um, and so this. Yes. Uh, oh, a lot. Hmm? A lot. How many? Yeah. 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 Um, What's your experience? What yeah. do you think? Most of the time, they just get thrown in the trash. So, um, I just graduated college in May of 2012, and I applied to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs, and no one called me back. And I have a degree. I'm bilingual, all right? <laughs> so, it's not looking that great. So, I wish you luck. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so what I want you guys to do is to take a look at the rest of the application and let me know if you have any questions about it. Okay. All right. So you instead of going through it uh, pick by pick. So if you have um, other questions from the beginning or from the last part, um, let me know. Yeah, uh, there's one question. Mm -hmm. This application form for United States. If someone comes to the United States from other country, it's going to be really difficult because you have to write uh, different things because your first time in the United States, you know, you have to uh, the, you have to write different phone number, different address, different kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why we went over addresses and telephone numbers. So just in case, um, I mean, just you know. not personal details. Also, employment history, other stuff. Maybe it's going to confuse the employer. I don't know. We don't. I don't know what you think. Um, so, a lot of times, um, applications are followed with a cover letter and your um, resume. Um, so if you're still living, you know, in South Africa and you're applying for jobs, in your cover letter, you're going to express interest for moving from South Africa, maybe to a different country, or um, especially if uh, the company you're applying to, you know, say is in Canada, all right, you're going to express interest in that company and moving to Canada. Um, so you plan you know, it's definitive. You will move there if you get the job, okay? Um, or if you're already living in the U.S. and somehow you, or in Canada, and you already have working papers. Um, so a lot of you are European citizens um, that are on Verbling, and so you have the right to work in, uh, so say if, um, like, you're from Spain, pretty sure you do have the right to work in the U.K., um, not positive about that, but because I'm not European, I think you do. Um, but and you need to speak English, um, and you're already living within the, you know, the UK boundaries. All right, um, you are going to put your old information, and that's okay. Uh, um, about also the amount of your uh, ex salary, mm -hmm. for instance, some. Salary is not really similar in the U.S. and mm -hmm. South Africa, in other countries, maybe. Maybe I earn very uh, less. Maybe U.S. in the United States, they pay for similar position is more. Yeah. If i going to write real amount of my money when I earn in my country, mm -hmm. it's going to affect the uh, wage policy. In in the uh, I mean company new company. Uh, so don't be worried about that. What they're making sure is uh, so if they see uh, so for example like I know um, I've had some students in Egypt and we've talked about pricing and so their salaries in Egypt are a lot uh, smaller than they are in the U.S. for the same job and the cost of living we call it the cost of living. Um, is cheaper, okay? Um, and so what you have to do for these applications, it sucks, but you have to go online and you convert it, um, okay? But when you say where you're working, so you're up here, you know, and you're saying, okay, um, say you were, 
I don't know, a financial advisor, all right? And so in your country, you made an equivalent of $50,000 a year, all right, per year, all right? Um, but um, in the U.S., if you're a financial advisor, $50,000 uh, is almost nothing, all right? So hi, Momo, you're from Egypt. Nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, we just talked about that in my cigarette class, all right? Um, so they're going to see that you're from a foreign country, um, and that's going to be okay. So a financial advisor in the U.S. is making six figures at least, <laughs> okay? Um, so they're going to see that it's from another country and that it doesn't matter. What they want to make sure of is that, for example, if it's me, and I'm within the United States, and um, I was... Um, what they want to make sure of is that you're not overqualified for the job and that you're not underqualified. So if you're applying for a job that's making 70000 a year, but your last job you made 20000 you're not qualified for the job. That increase in um, salary difference uh, says a lot about the, the job. All right? So they want to make sure that you're qualified. That you're not too qualified, but that you're not underqualified. Could Does you say? Could you say that again? The amount. If you had, how much on your previous job? And okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so what they're yeah. trying to do. Okay. So say we're going to pick a nice even number of fifty thousand dollars. Okay. So mm -hmm. in your last job in Egypt, for example, as a financial advisor. You are making fifty thousand a year in U.S. currency. For us, that is considered nothing for that kind of position. All right, financial advisors. All right, my dad makes half a million a year. All right, <laughs> he's a millionaire. Um, so for a financial advisor, a lot of times you're making at least a quarter of a million dollars. Okay. Um, so something along those lines. I know these examples are drastic, but just to give you an idea. They're going to see that you're from Egypt, all right? Okay. Yeah, so it's it's, it's really drastic. <laughs> but Just if you like, applied for this job mm -hmm. and on your previous job you had a lower pay, like $100 a year, does that mean that you are not qualified for this job? No, so what they yeah. want to make sure of, say that um, I was making $50,000 a year and I'm working in marketing, okay? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I'm applying for a financial advisor job yeah. that's yeah. Um, four times what I made. Yeah. Clearly, I'm not qualified to have that kind of job, um, okay. and there's like, there's a diff there's such a difference in price that there's no way that you can be qualified. You can't go from making what we consider fifty thousand as an average salary like it's a good starting out salary to making a quarter of a million dollars that's impossible it's very very rare so they're going to see that you're not qualified for the job they're going to know exactly okay that you can't handle their workload um, and then the opposite is true so if you're making half a million dollars and all of a sudden you're applying for McDonald's you're probably not going to get the job unless you tell them that you have no money in your bank account, okay? So it's the idea of kind of staying in your place in society. <laughs> um, and you can work up, but you can't reach for the stars too quickly. You have to earn it. Does that make sense? So staying within the price range. So you can apply for jobs that are, are 20000 30000 For me, I mean, here they don't ask what kind of salary did you have on your last job. Really? It's nothing you have to, like write down on your application or s mm -hmm. because I think it's common you can go from a low paid job to a high paid job mm -hmm. and so forth but so it's kind of weird I think. For, yeah for us like the uh, going from uh, something from starting salary so for me for instance my starting job is unfortunately very low it's 25,000 a year Okay, but after two years, I can apply for a job that's you know starting at fifty thousand. So what they want to see is that you have spent, you've earned it, you spent your time in that job, you know. Um, so you're not going from 
something that you're you're not qualified from. You need the education and the time. But also, this is just making sure as well uh, when you're applying for minimum wage jobs. Um, a lot of times, minimum wage in the state depends on the state. So for Connecticut, it's nine fifty, um, and in Delaware, it's seven twenty five per okay. hour. Yeah. Really? Okay. So. And it doesn't matter how old you are, like. It does not matter. That mm -hmm. state uh, minimum wage and federal minimum wage used to be five fifty, but I think it's now six dollars an hour. So, for European currency, that's about four euros an hour. All right. So um, it's it's far below minimum wage yeah. here. So. And so, on um, applications when you're applying online. You're not going to be asked a lot of times what your salary was, but what your salary expectations are. So you should know the price range for your starting out, like for your job. Are they asking for that? Are they? Some applications will ask for that instead of what you made. Okay. So um, try not to guess too high and not to guess too low. If there's a range, choose the center, and then there's always you can barter if they want you. So, <laughs> yeah, um, and sometimes they may not ask you at all, and they may give you a price, and you may be able to ask for more money. So, because I know salary is very important, but it's also a very difficult subject to approach with a new boss, especially. All right, um, and any other questions about this application at all? Um, skills and qualifications, maybe? Um, so my only advice for this is if you're young like I am, so in your 20s and starting out, don't mention anything from high school. Um, maybe reference honors from college if you're looking for your first job. All right, um, Everyone's going to ask you what software you're qualified to work on um, when it comes to computers. Okay. Um, so they're going to ask you, are you Microsoft Office pro proficient? Um, Outlook, do you understand Outlook? All right. Those are questions that I see all the time. Like, can you work these programs? Yes or no? All right. Um, professional licenses. Um, all right. So if you have any um, specific um, specific certifications or documents to prove that you know you can do certain things and so for instance if you're if you're CPR certified that seems like a silly one but certain jobs you know if you're applying to become you know um, a principal <laughs> or a teacher you know uh, having that certification is important okay um, and then this one is very important for, um, you know, typing positions. Uh, so um, secretaries, assistants, um, and they're usually looking for at least 65 to 70 words per minute. So if you type more, that'd be great because that's the average. And a lot of people don't know what they type. I certainly don't. So um, you may have to test that out. And that seems like an odd question, but you will get that, especially if you're dealing with the computer a lot and you're expected to type up uh, memos and things like that. All right. So if you're a paralegal, all right, or an assistant, all right. Um, and so references, this is an important one. So who should you put as a personal reference? They say they cannot be relatives or former supervisors. So who would you put in the path? Former boss. Former. Um, so you, you cannot put a former supervisor. You cannot put your boss. But you can put someone else. Like, like a colleague or someone? Mm -hmm, exactly. Or, okay, okay. Why can you not put your boss? I'm so, so sorry, but I think I lost two personal reference. Your is uh, not your relative, not your supervisor, your colleagues. But if they require your colleagues reference, it means your workmates. It means you can give your friends phone number. 
and they call your friends and your friends say them he's very good worker or something like that mm -hmm. yeah so um, references um, like applying for stupid jobs they're going to ask you I just put my neighbor um, from my childhood um, I put um, who else I put one of my best friends who works there um, so a coworker from a previous job or um, a future coworker. So if you have a friend or an acquaintance at the company, you know that mentioned that job to you, you can put them, and it may be good, um, a great reference for you. Um, and references are honestly, they want to make sure you're a normal person. They probably won't even contact these people. Um, the only time references like these are really important is when they ask for letters of recommendations from your references that are not your supervisors or relatives. Um, so for the job I have right now, I had to get, um, I had to have a few references. I had to have three. And so I went to um, a professor, um, a friend, and a neighbor. So I had like a variation, you know, someone who knew me more personally. Um, like growing up as a child, which is my neighbor, someone who got me a job today, and so I work with her, she's a colleague, and then someone that had me in his classes, um, so something along those lines. Um, yeah, so... Uh, they, they always uh, respond in a positive way about you. Yeah, they, they should. Yeah, <laughs> there, is no, there is no mm -hmm. point, right, because for company writing on the application um, form, I don't understand why boss is not okay, a former boss. I don't um, I, I can hear exactly what Wolfie said. I guess um, a lot of times in the U.S., um, bosses may not know their workers. Uh, oh, okay. So that could, that could be one of the main reasons. Um, okay. And another time you'll see references, um, if you're applying for a government job, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to ask you, where um, where you lived and they want a reference. So if you say you lived in, so for me, I lived in Connecticut, they want a reference. All right, who can verify you lived there? And so for high security jobs, um, you're going to get those questions asked. So if you apply for anything government related, that's a different kind of reference you'll be asked to give, which is I need someone to verify that I lived there. Is that clear as well? And they those p can't be former bosses or um, or relatives. Yeah, usually. So they have to be like a neighbor or someone. Does that make sense? For governmental jobs only. Okay. All right. So um, what I want you guys to do um, instead of the third application. So if you want to take a look at the second application. All right, um, and if you want to do this, you don't have to. What you can do, there's like five people in class, which is great for me. Um, they ask you to write uh, like three paragraphs on job application number two. So if you go to my class resources, all right, and they say do job description, duties, skills, equipment used, all right, um, and they want you to write a paragraph. Um, and then the other one. You want us to write a paragraph or to fill the application form? Um, so, um, just because it may be difficult to fill out the application form and then repost it on Facebook, um, just to write the paragraph, all right? So, um, job description, duty, skills, equipment used. And you just have to write one paragraph for that. All right, and then... Um, all right, additional information that could help you qualify for this position. Okay. All right. So, so we can post this on your website or on your mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, so you may not want to post it to my Laura on Verbling page in case there's personal information. So what you can do is you can send me a message. Laura, um, can you post your Verbling yeah. link? Dot Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the Google chat because I think public chat isn't working. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, so it's on um, group chat. All right, so those two, and you can just do one paragraph or the other. Um, all right. Okay. Um, the job description one is usually more in the form of a list to help you guys out with that. So duty, skills, equipment used. You can say, I use blank, da 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 something along those lines. All right, it's usually um, like two or three sentences. All right, it's very short and in a list form. But um, additional information that could help you qualify for this position, uh, this is like your plea to get the job. So why should they choose you over someone else? All right. Um, and so just make sure for these uh, to be quick and to the point. So try to do no more than three or four sentences because if I'm not going to read it, your boss is not going to read it in the future. All right? All right. So have a good night, guys. Um, and it should be second application that you see. And if you want, you can fill it out and you can send it to me. And I can let you know if you did it correctly. Okay? Um, but that's up to you if you want to do some homework. Yeah, that's great. Thank right. you so much. You're welcome. So I know this class wasn't super interesting because, you know, applications suck. Um, but I hope, you know, that it helps because I filled out an application in French and I had to spend, I'm pretty fluent in French, I had to spend hours with a dictionary making sure that I filled out my information correctly. Um, Are you working so. in France? Yeah, so now I have a job in France.